like another good Sunday morning to me and woo Finally enough I actually did a thunderstorm video and I uh, haven't got the video yet at the moment though but yes in this video I'm going to be doing something pretty much conventional as always on a Sunday it's just a normal toy review but first off we're going to show you one problem that I actually forgot to solve Dun dun dun! It looks like I haven't turned off the light though when I was actually clearing my throat in the bathroom and stuff. I'm just gonna turn this light off. And also, just to let you know, I've got a computer mouse. And in this video, I've actually noticed that this computer mouse was actually playing up there. So, I don't know about you, but um, I'll try and get over in this video today because hopefully. It's going to be one of those flip up toy views where we're going to be seeing a very huge change. A very interesting wind of change. Maybe not for some people and stuff, eh? And the train I've got is because I'm going to put the camera right down on the floor there. And maybe place the train and stuff. Let me place it like so. How's that? Does that look better enough for you, eh? Although the train's not yet in the screen, eh? But uh, we've got track marks and loop. Pulling the same train and stuff though. I believe it's a cargo train. I did a lot of forcing taps though on the mouse there, and uh, sadly I couldn't even get the mouse to work though. Like the human mouse, it was completely um, laggy though overall. It just keeps on, you know, it actually just keeps on cutting down and turning itself on back again though. And uh, I tried everything, I tried to cut the use and stuff and stuff. I think it was a gel mouse. But um, I mean, it's very slow and something that that's slow. But anyways, we're not talking of computer mouses as that train has gone by today, which has been used in that thunderstorm video, which, as I said earlier, I haven't uploaded yet at the moment. I haven't uploaded that video at the moment, though, but um, you'll see, though, once that video is finished. But anyways, um, very sad news, though. We're going to take a look at this very first this that product, eh? Well, it's not really a very first with that product though, but um, this is actually the first with that product I'm actually going to show you though, in this video though. Uh, this one is called the Flip Love Origami Flapping Birds British Wildlife Collection. Solitary Confined, that sounds quite more of a... P oh my goodness, the word solitary confinement. That's more likely something you'll find in a prison. Oh, hang on, I'll put that product back in the camera though and stuff though, and it's called... Yes, I know I've read the word solitary and confined, but um, it's also called the Vulnerable Potchard Pair, or should I say, and Vulnerable Potchard Pair, and Tough to Duck Feeding Flight Flop 12 Pack, £18.95, that's pretty very weird for a price like that. And we're going to take a look at the back of the packaging, it looks very, very nice. And I've actually noticed there's a very weird wind of change in the way I do flip flap products these days. Which is going to be very, very sad day, but uh, I don't know how long it would last for. But anyways, I'm just going to give this product a spin because I'm quite curious as you guys are. I don't think I've got anything to stand up with though, but... Um, Alright then, I'm just going to unpack this and see what we have. All of these products are in Generation 124, which is considered to be one of the later of all FIFA generations of toys that I've produced so, so far. And, um, whoa, let's see what do we have today. Okay, uh, the fishies that we've got is a common dace. It's one of the ones which are like small, greedy looking freshwater fishies, I suppose, eh? Got the sort of tails at the back, yellow eyes and stuff. Here's the other one there, it looks like he's, oh my goodness, it looks like he's seen far much better though, is that fish? Crockies, that's not a good look, eh? Um, this one here. Looks fairly okay, looks, well, I don't know how good or crisp in colour it is though, maybe if I show you the other one here as well, maybe this one looks a bit more, well, what can you say, it looks like he's seen far better days though on the front there, on that side there, but on the other side, he's nicely mint in condition, and uh, here's the other one as well, I've got some other flip up products with me to take a look at in this video today. And, um, because of the fact that I'm just sort of thinking, well, maybe it's better for me to just take my time and just don't overly rush the whole video and stuff, though. Oh my goodness me, there's quite a lot of 
common dice and stuff there, which is quite a nice fish to have there. And if it's like the universe, they do look like magic up there. And we've also got well, it's basically a ram's horn snail shell. I believe I've seen one of those snails before though. At um, I think it was the botanical garden, so I used to remember looking at those. Very, very nice snails though. Uh, the freshwater snails, so um, they're quite different to the other snails though, yeah, we often see though. That's nice, isn't it? Eh? And we've got some ducks there. We've also got uh, this pottery here, and obviously what's very strange is, is that the reason why I made this pot is because I've actually just saw a pottery that was actually resting there, it was actually breeding, and funnily enough, we don't often see potchards as breeding duck species there, but mainly a wintering visitor though, for the fact that, you know, whenever I think of potchards, apart from their chestnut-like heads, and their red eyes and stuff, they are very, very interesting to take a look at, and not only that, but um, potchards are declining in numbers, and that's quite sad actually though, uh, I wonder what this is, that's a tufted duck, that's a female tufted duck by the looks of it though. Uh, it almost looks like it's actually confusing. If I bring in the female potchard, as you can see, the main difference is that it's got more of a yellow eye, and also the wings are a lot more lighter than the potchard itself. This one's the potchard, though. Uh, it looks very, almost similar, though. And the wing pattern is also a little much more different, though. If you look at a female potchard, this looks fairly different, though. And also, there's a bit of trivia though, in the winter, as you can tell straight forward though, in the UK, when many of those guys, which are obviously the potchards though, which are like those red, chestnutted head looking ducks like that, there seems some sort of to be, I don't know what it is though, but I believe there's some sort of weird imbalance. You know, there's actually a lot more males than females. And the female potchards are actually a lot more harder to spot than the males. Well, obviously due to the fact they're just not as colourful though. Oh, sorry, that was a tufted duck. That is, of course, a potchard. Those ones there. As I can tell by the scarlet red eye on the front. Yeah, and also the other side as well, actually, though. And actually, what I was about to do is to show you the wing uh, comparison there. The wing pattern comparison is the tufted duck, and this one here is the potchard. They look almost similar, but this one's got much more darker, sort of wing colorization here, which is quite interesting, alright? It's also got those brown big wing tip thingies. And we've also got this one here. It's a male tufted duck, it's got a purple head. Um, but um, I think, obviously tufted ducks, um, for the most part of it though, they're very iridescent birds though. I think the males are pretty much iridescent for the fact that their heads are actually iridescent. Lovely wing beats on those ducks. Oh my goodness, where the iron is? That one there as well. Looks lovely. Lovely, lovely looking ducks there as well. I have to say, this looks sort of beautiful, I have to say, eh? Beautiful indeed. And, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these away straight in the packaging, as I would obviously do. Obvious, is it, eh? Very, very nice. Okay, so as uh, you may have noticed, there's a very big win of, of change, and we're actually seeing less flip flap origami flapping bird products. So, and strangely enough, I think it's very sad that none appeared this week. That's a very big shame, isn't it, though? But uh, we'll wait and see. But I believe that's the only one being reviewed today, though, and I think it was made last week, though. But, um, yeah, it's quite an old flip flap product, eh? That sort of sort of duck species there. Let me take a look at a another flip flap origami product there. Once again it's a British Wildlife Collection product there. Let me just get a bit closer here. Um ooh it's called the Common Smooth Hound Shark Small Shiver Five Pack and they're called Smooth Hounds because they hunt in packs like dogs or hands would do. Eight pounds ninety five it's the price. That's the back of the packaging on what we've got there. And they've got five sharks. I believe I've seen videos of these sharks being caught in Mumbles Pier, which is somewhere in Swansea. I believe that's some sort of weird pier in Swansea where they've got like nesting seabirds and stuff. I think they've got seagulls called kiwakes, I think. 
you know, the kitchen works that you often see at the at the sea quest and stuff, so that's very strange that they're nesting it appears there, but it's a nice addition obviously though. But anyways, here's some very good artwork of the common smooth hound sharks, the lovely tails as well. Strange shark tails, I wouldn't obviously associate shark tails looking like that. But that's actually quite true because I've already seen sharks like that with that sort of tail design. And I'm actually having trouble um, sitting nicely today, but um, man, I actually nervous. I was also busy just dilly dallying all the way along though. I was just pretty much doing stuff. And also, remarkably enough, I actually went to Middleton Lakes on Saturday, which was of course yesterday, and I actually felt very tired. I might come back and talk about that subject later on though. In this video, of course, it's a smooth hound shark. They actually come in two different colours. As I've actually looked at the back of the packaging now. And the artwork as well. So you get like a grey version. So there's like two greys. Two of those grey sharks. Which look like that. Okay, so I might show you this one first. That's quite big and that one there as well. That looks lovely, isn't it? Okay, for a shark. And we also have two of those brown ones here as well. Uh, obviously, that's very nicely um, done, though. In fact, there's another species called the Starry Smooth Hound. I think what's pretty much the main difference between this shark and the Starry Smooth Hound is that, well, the, they don't have any patterns of spotness, maybe starry effects, though. I can't remember, eh? But um, yeah, they've got yellow eyes in the front there as well, which makes them a lot more menacing to take a look at actually though. Nice monstrous looking fish. Oh yes, I should have just put all have chompy jaw actions there, I should have just added though. And uh, maybe I should try and do that in another video though. Nevertheless, it's still quite a nice product eh? And And um, it still looks a lot, you know, lovely isn't it eh? Having those sharks. Around us, eh? Maybe I should make some more sharks like that one, eh? How about that? The common smooth hound shark small shiver five pack. What do you think? Eight pounds ninety five for that product, eh? And speaking of dogs, I'm gonna take a look at this one here. It's a flip up origami pets toy. And strangely enough, we've got Chow Chows. It's called the cute Chow Chow dog color variations uh, five pack. I wonder why we're heading towards like these sort of types of toys which are more well obviously they look almost look girly oriented but um it's just the artwork that just shouts out girly there but um that's just my stereotyping but um it's not really a girly thing toy and what but what is a girl I'm pretty sure what is a girly toy will be there somewhere later on in this video though could get a, a bit more requests and stuff eh there you go, it's quite nice though, seeing those chow chows, they've got those beautiful blue-black tongues, or black-blue tongues, quite nice though, it costs about £9. And I've got to tell you what, it's quite a nice looking product, alright, let me just unpack this and see what we've got. Oh my fuck I'm going to get the dogs out. Here we are, we've got five different colour versions. I think chow chows are like a Chinese dog breed from China though, I believe they were like guardians. And um, they are a spitz breed, as I can tell from the curly tails and whatnot there, and the pointy ears, and wolf fox faces. So it's kind of like some sort of weird wolf or fox sort of face there. But um, this is a white one, obviously there, as I can tell. But it looks, it looks like a samoyed, or maybe a Japanese spitz. Well, it looks a bit there, but chow chows look very lion-like. Okay. Uh, this one here, uh, they do have names though, they all say the word chow chow though, but uh, I would have preferred them if they had names of different colours though. Uh, this one looks like a red chow chow, even though it's orange, obviously though, okay, so there's two different shades of orange there, they've all got brown eyes, for that matter in the sense though that, um, you know, chow chows are pretty much, I think most dogs tend to have eye colours like that. Although. I could say otherwise though, this one looks cream looking there, because I can tell it's a lighter colour though, with browny coverts and stuff. As I can tell, straightforward though, it's quite a nice product though. There's the name, 
I should show you the white one here as well. That also has a name as well at the back at all times. This one is a brown one though. Strange, oh my crockies, this one looks like, um, it wasn't that crooked though, but uh, it's probably that head ear section thing that must have moved like that, just to make it quite iffy though. Strange, wasn't it, eh? But, um, yes, by looking at that chow chow, it's actually not too bad, it's in pretty good condition, oh yeah. Uh, I gotta tell you what, it does look so, so nice. Um, sometimes those models have got like errors there where I accidentally push the pencil a bit too hard. The faces sort of, well, they, look, they don't look as that nice though when the faces start to look like they've been ripped today. But nevertheless, lovely orange on the side and the brown fur as well. And we've also got a black chow chow. It's not entirely black though, which is quite weird though, but um, it does look the part though. It does look quite nice though for a dog like this. Maybe I should make some more of these toys. What do you think? And on the back, there you go, it says the word chow chow. Fancy that one, eh? So there you go, that was quite simple, wasn't it, eh? And speaking of girl themed toys, which I assume, oh, I'm actually going to take a look at. Guess what? Remember what I said in the first Flip Flap Summer Toy View that I've spoken about the Flip Flap Ponies toy range? Well, guess what? We've got some ponies! But I've only just made one of those Flip Flap Origami Pony products though because I'm struggling to contend with the British one outside at the moment though. Here is of course Inky Pie's Swan Motorboat Ride and Friends 5 pack. It costs about £9.95. And there's the back of the packaging. It looks like that. We can see Bonnie Dash. And we can also see Rarity as well, which is quite nice though. And there you go, it's quite interesting though. Look at this, very interesting ad though. It says, check out more Flip Lap Ponies toys when you shop with us. So it's quite nice though, but it doesn't talk about online shopping, which is something quite peculiar though, because I haven't got a website at the moment though. And there you go, you can load just only two ponies on the swan boat. Well, let's see what we can do today. And despite the name, it's not even a power toy. There's no batteries in it, though. Unlike that train. So we've got four ponies, four of these pony toys, though. And we've also got the swan boat. Fancy that. And what's even peculiar is, is that it's dried. In fact, it was watercolored. Uh, but uh, it looks quite nice, actually, eh? You can actually store. Very nicely. I love the cute aesthetic design, eh? On this sort of swan boat toy. It's got those sides like that. And you can load in... Uh, is that Rarity? I believe that's Rarity. She can ride in there. And um, that looks like a very battered up Pinkie Pie. Oh my god! It looks like we've got... Oh my god! It looks like Pinkie Pie has seen Farmer's Better Days, eh? Uh, I believe Pinkie Pie, she looks like she got fried Pinkie Pie, oh my god. That's so weird. That looks like a very fried up Pinkie Pie. Or, well, I can tell from the from the uh, the fact that uh, that she's got a mane that was super glued and stuff. I mean, I just have to say this is so, so strange. The shade of pink, it's very, very different though. If I um, lift the model nicely though, if I come in and show you what this model would look entirely though there you go, that looks really nice though, it's got the lovely balloons and stuff and uh, I have to say it really is a very nice thing, nice isn't it? that sort of pony toy and uh, I definitely say there'll be some people who used to be bronies, there's some other people like you know children and teenagers that will have some sort of weird trip back memory in time when um, when the Brony fandom was king back in the early 2010s decade, I believe so. And it's quite nice though, Pinkie Pie, even though she looks so fried in the head though. How oh, weird about that. Uh, this one here is Maud Pie. I believe that's Pinkie Pie's sister. By the looks of it though, with that sort of aesthetic drawing and design. Uh, like, you know, in the front cover though. Okay, so they're sort of Try to do products like that, and, but yet again, 
There you go. It still looks nice though. I mean, the real aspect about the head there, I believe the head used to be a lot more uh, bigger. I suppose the eyes used to be bigger though, but now they became a bit more smaller. How weird is that? How strange is that? I believe there's a very... That's a smile, I believe though. Can you see a smile? That's not her actual smile, the dark grey. But that's actually her smile. If I go a bit closer here, I'm sure I can show you where the face is, eh? There you go. And the other side as well. She looks pretty much mighty calm. She speaks with a soft sort of sort of um darkish sort of tonish voice. Tonish melancholy yet soft sounding voice. I couldn't remember about the show though, but um luckily enough I do actually. Most of it there, but I couldn't remember Mod Pie that well. And then here's Bonnie Dash, of course, who's like one of the main pony themed characters I've created all by myself though. There you go, that's a very nice interpretation of Bonnie Dash there. I love the design aesthetics, I love the lightning bolt, you know, cutie mark and the thundercloud as well. That looks very, very nice, isn't it? Though? Very beautiful. Nice and dark green. I shall have to make more and more of those flip up we going pony themed summer toys. How about that? And also I'm just waiting for the next hot summer though in July of twenty twenty one. And I'm just sort of thinking maybe get it hot though before like the twenty first of July. Maybe hot until the t the twenty fifth of July, that's what I'm thinking of. Because who wants a summer with every single student in my old school not even wearing a single blazer to school day. I would. Now uh, I gotta tell you what that oh sorry for the camera though. I have a funny feeling that that swan motorboat it looks sort of stunning. It, it does look like it's a 3D sort of model though but um I have to say that looks quite peculiar eh? Okay so it's got a very weird white underside there. I should have Colored the other part, eh? But um, that's weird, eh? It's a very nice design, actually, though. Mind you, if I stretch this one up, I'm pretty sure. Oh, frick. Um, ponies will be loadable, though. If I load Rarity up there, you know, I can have Pinkie Pie as well. Um, how's that, though? <laughs> Doesn't look like they're standing or doing some sort of. Uh, I don't think they're riding nicely, though. Maybe grab Pinkie Pie this time. She'll do it though. And I grab Bonnie Dash as well though. She might have. Oh, I think she's a bit too big because of her tail. Maybe Mod Pie as well on the other side here as well. How about that? Pretty compatible. I'm pretty sure it's compatible with other flip up pony themed products though. I should add that as well into the equation. If I'm going to be making flip up toys like this. So it's a very nice thing to do, make Flip Love Origami pony thing toys in the summer. I think it's going to be a nice contrast to those dinosaurs, let's just hope so. Or maybe not, because maybe, well, pony toys are pretty much, well, sometimes they can print you sometimes those types of toys though. The model pony things like esque Flip Up Toys, I'm just... Pretty no for obvious non obvious reasons sometimes I eh? obvious reasons actually they brings me back memories watching that show. Uh moving on along, I think this is the last product to take a look at via the envelope so but I've actually got two more for that products to show you today. Uh, this one here is a pink Pacific salmon and Atlantic salmon mixed species shoal twelve pack, non ten pounds ninety five. Uh, maybe a school of fish, but uh, I might be totally wrong though. It's another one of those first up origami British wildlife collection toys. And yes, I'm just going to take a look at the back of the packaging. Just like that. And I've actually noticed that the pink salmon, also known as pink Pacific, how I think, oh look at that, they're basically based on, well it's not just the Atlantic salmon that we've got though, but also the Pacific pink humpback salmon. What a nice fish species to take a look at, eh? And look at this. Warning, paper quality may vary from high to low. So, I definitely say the models of the fishies, I don't know how good or bad they are. Or how nice or inferior these toys are. Let me just go ahead and pack this. Oh, crikey, what we're getting is fish. 
and um, let's take this one here. Uh, I don't know what this is. I believe it's an Atlantic salmon because I can tell from the fact it, of those colours and stuff. I think what's missing are the spotty sort of patterns there you'd normally see on the Atlantic salmon. So here's another one there as well. Strangely enough, it's stuck to another fish. Maybe it's because of the glue and stuff. There you go. And that one's also an Atlantic salmon as well. I think we've got six of these. Um, I believe so. And um, this one here is an Atlantic salmon as well. Uh, I believe so. But um, yeah, that looks so, sort of very, very nice. I have to say that these toys are lavishly detailed, as I can tell straight forward though, even though they're. Well, sometimes some of these toys are. Well, they're not really always that perfect, but um, they're nicely lavishly detailed in a way that I think it's fantastic and absolutely miraculous in design and stuff, eh? Oh, we've got another one of those salmons. I believe these are Pacific salmons, though. Pink Pacific humpback salmons. Uh, I don't know about you, but um, am I seeing 12 or am I just seeing 11? I don't know, I've, oh no, I've actually realised I've actually made 11. Sorry about that, I've actually um, noticed there's some sort of weird error there. We've got some great big misunderstanding. Oh no, I've actually realised I've just missed out one fish. One of the Atlantic salmons, eh? I've actually um, forgot to make one of them, actually, eh? Oh, that's very silly of me. I'll try and do that later on. Hopefully when I'm finished with that video, though. But we've got, like... Oh, wait, I need to show you the um, Pacific salmon, sir. The pink Pacific ones. Um, yeah, so I actually had a look, though. There's actually 11 fish, though. Which is quite sad, though. This one looks sort of nice, though. That sort of detailing in it, though. And I believe that, I think that's the sort of colours that you'd normally find those salmon at sea. Oh, pardon me. I think they're normally at sea when they're like that. And I believe this one here, um, I definitely say it's that sort of colour variation. They've got those uh, weird spots at the back of their fins and maybe at the top as well on their dorsal fins as well. That sort of patterning, whenever I look at these two. Uh, I'll presume it's more like the breeding plumage of those types of fish and I have to say that this sort of colour pattern looks like that when the fishes they sort of leap and leap across every single part of the river and just to avoid bears and stuff there eh? because bears love to eat fish there eh? especially salmon especially those up in Alaska oh goodness me hopefully it's not one of that uh, I hope it's not one of those things where I can discover pure Alaska water like that video that Ashes has done. Oh my goodness me. There you go, this is totally better, eh? But um, sadly we've just missed that one fish. I'll try and go ahead and make another one, hopefully in another video. I might showcase that product again now. Maybe there might have been 12 you, if you would have watched the video properly there and whatnot though. But um, anyways. I'm going to show you some other cool stuff. I'm just going to repack this one properly today because the envelopes, sometimes the envelopes, they just don't stick well. That's weird, eh? Anyways, I'm just going to show you one of the most awesome of all 3D models I've actually made. Uh, it's this one here. And it's supposed to be a garage. Now, if this is a garage, uh, I wonder why it's a garage though. Well, as I can tell straight forward, it's got those in the front, it's got windows at the front there, it's a very nice looking garage door, it's quite big and uh, it's got like 16 windows in the front and it's got like some sort of weird I wonder what this is, is that like some sort of weird handle? I can't really tell, eh? And you can sort of open you know, the door there and you can sort of store vehicles and stuff there that's what the garage typically does as obvious as it sounds uh, there's not much artwork going on here at the back and the sides of the garage other than the fact that it's just a brown oh, wait, so it's not brown garage, it's just a blue garage I believe so and um, yeah it looks quite nice though, it's just a blue garage though, it's 3D day but the best part about this garage though is that you can actually store some vehicles in there but there's actually something awesome about this and let me just show you, this thing can actually be used as a car launcher, if I go ahead and grab 
some of the vehicles. I've actually noticed there's quite a few vehicles though. And I might actually want to showcase on how it works, eh? And I'm just going to put the webcam onto the ground, eh? And let the garage just place the the planes and stuff, eh? And then that comes up in the way. I'm just searching the vehicle and stuff, eh? Everything, I don't know, I'm just searching for them. I'm just searching around, just going to keep on looking around. And I'm going to race with vans, I believe so. And what you can do is that you can actually put not just one vehicle at a time though, you can also store, guess what, guess how many. I'm just going to move the garage today a bit newer though. Hang on, before I can actually continue, I'm actually going to move this chair away though. Oh my god, oh, it's going to get quite painfully tedious as I'm going to do this. So you can store like one car a day, but you can also store more than one car. I'm just going to grab those vans here, so there's two. You can actually store three. I'm going to show you how it works, and I'm going to give it a spin. And uh, it can actually be used as a car launcher, and if I show you like that, and if I move the garage up, here we go, three, two, one. That's strange, eh? This it doesn't look like that this one is launching. <laughs> there we go. But um, it is quite fairly nice there. I'm just going to do it again. Let me just show you once more before we fail without even showing my face there in this video though. Because I'm not normally a vlogger though. Here we go. Three, two, one. That's weird. Why is it always this side here which gets a lot more caught up? It gets easily caught up there, that side there. I don't know why. I have no freaking idea why this sort of happens there. I think the cars tend to roll back better if, if it's like, you know, a bathroom slash kitchen tile. And I don't know if it sort of works. Not so day. Maybe I should sort of want to move the chair away there. I sort of want to have a go at the bathroom. How about that? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Well, that's better, eh? And uh, I've just launched all three cars, that is much better though. That is much better, I have to say. I didn't even know that, um, well, I actually thought the wheels aren't like that right. Uh, it looks like they're sort of looking like they're falling apart, but I don't think they are because of the amount of glue I've used. So let's see if I can do this again. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, the green car is the winner. I believe so, because I've got the fact that the. Um, body and stuff though, it looks very nice. In fact, I can have another go. I can just launch any other vehicle along the way, eh? Whoa! And the green car is of course the winner! Look at that! It has just scooted all the way like that! That is pretty amazing. I'm just gonna grab the vehicles and stuff. Oh no. I'm just gonna... Oh no, I think... Oh god. Let me just... Oh no, I'm just going to reach it though, uh, without having my face being shown like that. Oh my god, this is going to get quite embarrassing now, let me just grab this box. There we go, I've just got this jellyfish box though, just to make sure that the cars are back. I don't want my face to be shown all the time though, because, um, you know, you know what happens when you show your face on videos like that. Can be quite dorky though sometimes, eh? Uh, but anyway, that that's what we have. Though. That's a very nice car launcher, though. In fact, I might probably use some other cars. I've actually got a few vehicles and stuff. I might probably use them. I've got two more there. I've actually got those ones here. I've got a pickup or a huge. I've got a hatchback, which is blue, and I've also got the same one as well. Let's see how these cars work. Even though this one's a fair bit wider than the other cars though. So I'm just gonna show you how I put the cars inside here. Okay, let's see what we have. Three, two, one, and fire! Oh, look at that, the Ute has won! And it looks like that the Viva hatchback has just got itself caught up though with the um, blue hatchback. I couldn't remember their names there, let me just have a look though. Oh, Admir. I actually thought of Padme from Star Wars. 
Right. <laughs> That's that weird meme though that they're doing at the moment, though, eh? That's strange, isn't it? I'm just gonna load them back. I just can't help myself playing with this day, but a bit of, I think we'd better move on though after this. I think this is gonna be my let's go here. Here we go. Sweet two one and fire Oh yay, look at that. Woo! Look at that. That's what he says the uh, green car, I to say, eh? Maybe I can use my hands though. Uh, luckily enough, I haven't got my face being shown this time, eh? But uh, there you go. That's what you get. It's a nice garage. In fact, I'm going to show you one good vehicle that I might probably show you to end the video there. Do you remember I did the Peacock bus I did there, which was a right e bus? I've actually made another bus this time. And it's going to be a different company bus, as I can show you this one here. Um, it's some sort of wide-body bus. And if I go ahead and grab the Peacock bus, which I did back in, uh, was it? I think it was during May. And this one is a very differently coloured bus. It's called the Rapid City FF bus. And it looks quite nice. Fast for every 30 minutes, as it, as it says. It actually says like that, though, in every side day and it's based on a bus a very specific bus produced by the Scottish bus company Alexander I think it's called Alexander Dennis uh, it's supposed to be the Enviro 200 as you can see there there's the back of the bus there there you go it looks quite nice HB11 CPT it looks beautiful that bus there's no advertisements in the back unfortunately they and uh, the logos, it looks sort of different though, with the font and also the lightning bolt as well. And um, yeah, look at that face. It actually has that sort of Lightning McQueen aesthetic though. Number 57, Sandtown. And look at that, it also says free Wi Fi in the bus there as well though. How cool is that? A Lightning McQueen sort of themed bus. I could call this one Lightning McSteve, but we're not going to because of copyright infringement. That's quite weird. Fancy that. What do you think? A bus in the style of Lightning McQueen from Cars, I suppose, eh? There you go, 57 Sand Town. There's that weird button, no? Eh? Also, if you look, if you look closer here, there's a disabled badge and elderly symbol badge. And hopefully, it's not Lightning McQueen, but not for legal reasons. And if I grab the Peacock bus, uh, which I did back in May. It's actually a lot more wider, but it's also quite shorter as well. If I grab this one here, the mirrors are also a little bit longer as well, though, which makes it sort of peculiar as well. Uh, it's got the barcode on the top there, uh, the right eclipse bus there, the peacock bus there. It's got a barcode on the side of the window there, which is interesting, eh? For a bus model like that one, eh? Fancy that one, eh? It's got that advertisement. Um, at the back there as well, and also the sides as well. Very obvious, isn't it, though, for a bus, eh? But not all buses have advertisements and stuff. Lovely lights on the top here as well, though, on that bus. Eh? It looks fancy, doesn't it, though? It looks pretty fancy, and I've got people coming in there, eh? but um, hopefully, um, as I'm making this video, I'm sure we can get through. Oh, crikey, I feel like we're almost going to get towards the two-minute mark of... 10 o'clock or until 10 o'clock but um, hopefully I can get this video done before 10 o'clock and I can guarantee to you this is totally awesome totally awesome indeed and the faces are sort of different and if I stack this bus on top the Rapid FF or the Rapid City FF bus on top of the Peacock bus you can see there's a bit of difference it looks almost exactly the same width it's actually a, a little bit wider and the other bus I did. So that's a very nice comparison. And the best thing about this new bus I've made is that you can actually fit it in the garage. Fancy that, it's like a weird bus depot, but you're literally putting the bus in a very different position. Well, you know what? This actually looks fairly fantastic. And if I ever try and put the Hecock buses, uh, right, Eclipse bus, it sort of fits in. It's quite a firm fit. Even though the mirrors are looking like they've been hammered by the um, garage. Side wars. Well, I think that's probably about it, though. Um, I've got to tell you, there was quite a complex tour you do, looking at the buses and stuff, and even that garage as well. Well, it was quite a rough start, stating that the garage was brown, but it's actually blue. Ha ha ha! 
Well, I've got to tell you what, I, I think that this video is pretty much done for the rest of the day. So anyways, please give this video a like, subscribe for more free content onto my YouTube channel, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and goodbye for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.